Now here in game four, Strat Game has switched to the Foul Undead, bringing in the giant enemy crab, Ghost Lady, against the Warriors of Chaos. Archeon the Ever Chosen versus Silostra the Air Fine. Doesn't get better than that, folks. We've got a Morgul Haunter here as well. Whole bunch of animated hulks, four of them. Uh, yeah, three bombers, bunch of pistols, and some pole arms. So, fairly straightforward in terms of Vampire Coast builds. There's no mobility. There's just what you see in front of you, which is quite a bit, it must be said. Archeon, like I said, leading the way. Makes sense to go with the heavily armored Chaos Warriors here, as they're better able to shrug off the damage from the bombs. Got a shield, a halberd, great weapon, halberd, and shield. In a nice line here. Some Marauder Horsemen to back them up. Sorcerer of Metal for some additional Plague of Rust action, specifically on crabs. And of course, Archeon being the ever scary powerhouse that he is. Spirit Leech, Burning Head, and he's got all his items and such. Fully kitted out, looking good. On the flanks, we've got some Hell Striders as well for a bit of mobility. So let's get on and see how they do. Archeon's going to come forward here and just immediately try and vanquish some animated hulks. Solo like, I think he's tr maybe trying to draw out the bombs here just to see if Strat Game is on fire at will. Of course, he is not, so it's not going to necessarily work like that. But Archeon will come in, he'll do some cycle charges, just punish that one animated Hulk in particular. But he does have to be careful not to get surrounded. You saw there he almost did get fully surrounded by the animated Hulks, which would be super cost and efficient for him. It would allow Silostra and the Morngul to then make their way over. Let's see. Javelins are throwing in at the animated Hulks. And Chaos is just going to give it an engagement straight up. Why not? I mean, the bombs haven't had a lot of time to fire so far. And you see there... They do knock over almost the entire unit of Halberds, but really don't do a whole lot of damage to them. Uh, yeah, maybe a quarter damage after like a volley and a half there. So it is something, but certainly a lot less damage than like a regular unit of Marauders would be taking, right? And they'll slowly filter into combat over time as the rest of the Chaos Warriors now get into contact. Got the Great Weapons right in the center. Archeon's going to come in to try and support against the Crab Lady, but of course she's got her own bag of tricks being the double summon here with both the crabs and the damned knights errant with their frostbite and ap they're gonna charge back and immediately start pursuing the skirmish cavalry and tearing them down meanwhile Celestra dueling with the support of the mourn ghoul against archaon in the center he's fully charged up with all of his stuff or at least was there momentarily while the summoned crabs get distracted kind of fighting this metal sorcerer here i guess they're somewhat engaged on these halberds who now taking significant damage, but uh, yeah, also been able to get into combat here and wreck some animated hulks, so it's not all lost. The Hellstriders are squishy enough that they're going to have a hard time here as I smack my mic stand. Apologies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you see here a couple of animated hulks have already taken fairly significant damage. They are pretty flimsy units, but uh, for the damage output for the cost is really fantastic. Let's see, the Chaos Warriors are grinding it out right now, and a lot of this is going to come down to the character fight, obviously. If Archeon is able to defeat these two, or vice versa, that will significantly change the outcome of this battle. Will probably be overall the deciding factor, but Jellyfish going for a nice flank attack here with his regrouped Hellstriders, trying to get in and silence those gun mobs. And bomb mobs, pistols getting charged here. It's kind of weird, though, because I feel like the zombies are fairly meaty for a skirmish unit. They'll continue to fire in melee a little bit. I'm not sure the Hellstriders will actually do that well here. Those look like they're tearing apart those bombers pretty quickly, but overall, there's a lot of counterfire and support for the Vampire Coast. Forces those Hellstriders away. And uh, here we see the uh, Plague of Rust upgraded, taking Silostra, even with that, still down to 90 armor. Um, I mean, it certainly does help to get that advanced Plague of Rust, but, um, I mean, so the crabs have so much armor that it almost doesn't matter. Nice burning head going to be unleashed in the back line as well. And I guess most of Silostra's magic so far has been used on summons. I haven't seen, like, a Van Geist yet. Does she actually have Van Geist? She does not. Just Tide Call. Okay, so we're going to be looking for that cheap Tide Call, but Silostra's in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Strat Game didn't take any source of healing here. And she has taken a massive amount of damage from 
Archeon and is now looking to be fully defeated. Gets the second crab summon off just before she goes down here. That'll kind of help buy her a tiny bit of time. Oh, there's Death Guard mixed in here as well. Death Guard Halberds. That's going to make a huge difference, especially against like Archeon in the late game. Yeah, did I say this was Zombie Halberds? I mean, there are some Zombie Halberds here, but yeah, the Death Guards should be able to sustain here fairly well against Archeon. But let's see. With Silostra down, a lot of the lower tier units are going to start to have leadership issues, which they were largely having already, but probably see some army-wide crumbling for the most part on most units. Let's see. Let's see how Archeon's able to perform. He's got that armor of Morkar for extra melee defense. Now going to pull away from this kind of death ball of halberds and whatnot. A little bit of spirit leech there on the Morngul. And Chaos Warriors filtering back in. Try to help. We've got this one fairly healthy unit out on the flank here. Another, the shielded marauder out here is doing okay, but a lot of Chaos stuff has taken significant damage. Archeon is really the most dangerous thing left by far. And, I mean... The Death Guard pole arms probably will be able to kill him regardless, but if he can get rid of the Morngul Haunter here, perhaps fight back on some of the leadership, get the assistance of his Chaos Warriors to fight the Death Guards, possible he could still win. Balance of power is definitely fairly close to even, and a huge part of that is Archeon. Not to mention we've got these Marauder Horsemen also, uh, with a decent amount of unit models online. This one kind of being forgotten about in the woods momentarily is a little rough, but... Thankfully for Vampire Coast, they still have Terror from this Haunter. He also has self-healing in melee, so as long as he stays in combat, he can keep getting that hunger regeneration. Try and stabilize this situation, because in the center, it's not looking great. Besides the Death Guards, pretty much everything else is falling apart. <laughs> Which I guess is to be expected, but they are Depth Guards after all. Archeon's going to try and pull away there through his own horseman. Gets a little bit mass blocked by some zombies. Should be able to get out, though. Maybe. I mean, now he's got the... Uh... Yeah, the Death Guards to deal with. And the Morngul's also looming. So things are looking a little bit sideways right about now for Archeon. But thankfully, the Morngul very helpfully gives him a boost out of the Death Guards. And he can now screen through the Hell Striders and these... Chaos Warriors, this one unit of Chaos Warriors could be the key to Archeon's success. He's able to grind it out in combat with them as support. You can see the bombs throwing in here, what little ammo they have left. Maybe doing a tiny bit of friendly fire. Of course, Death Guards also have the hunger and will be regenerating a little bit of HP as they fight in melee. Archeon probably is going to have to cycle charge on top of having the Warriors fight. Smart to have the Horsemen just come and finish off these Tattered units. They have a few more javelins they could potentially throw at the Haunter. That would be nice. And then, meanwhile, Archeon can keep cycle charging. And, like, here, as the Depth Guards get an attack order on Archeon, and then they start to pull away from the Chaos Warriors. The Chaos Warriors can get some free hits, but Strat Game smartly moves in the Haunter to get some nice anti-infantry AP, try and finish off this unit of Chaos Warriors, support his Depth Guards properly. Handful of javelins are going to come in, and normally the Haunter is extremely vulnerable to shooting, but as... Chaos is limited to just the Javelins. Could be tough, but here comes Archeon for another timing push, and this is what I'm talking about with support. Archeon plus the Chaos Warriors plus everything else. These Death Guards are definitely getting beat up pretty badly. Thankfully for Coast, there is a second one on station, and Archeon kind of over-pursuing a little bit here. Has an attack order on the Haunter, but that's going to take him deep into enemy lines, and his own support units flee the field there. Chaos Warriors are technically still holding, just barely for the time being, but that burning head is going to affect their leadership as well. Archeon taking the hits from the Halberds and even the zombie Halberds, and here comes the Haunter with his giant dislocated jaw. Archeon's going to get one last Spear Leech before he shatters, and that will be a very close victory to Strat Game. Very well played. Um, yeah, and that's some nice Vampire Coast action. Love to see me some... By Lostra, even if she herself didn't necessarily perform, the summons were fairly decent and they did enough. And the Death Guard definitely carried very heavily in the late game. Love to see the Haunter perform well, also, not a very common pick from what I see these days. So nice there. The animated Hulk's fairly cost effective bombers makes sense again why you bring the armor to kind of negate a lot of the power of those bombers. And they 
largely don't pay for themselves. The halberds, zombie halberds, though, do a pretty good job, as do many of the pistols. Poor jellyfish here. I mean, Archeon had to do a lot of heavy lifting, as a lot of his other units didn't output that much damage. The Chaos Warriors do a little bit. Elstriders aren't necessarily cost-effective. It's a little bit of a weird matchup for them. They don't have a lot of great targets here, honestly. I might go with, actually, Poison. Uh, Warhound's leadership is so bad, though. It's tough to use them against Undead. Hard to say, really. Uh, maybe just Max Marauder Horsemen, honestly. They may have been more useful overall than the Hellstriders here. But uh, anyway, that's it for today. Subscribe for the rest of this series and for more Total War Warhammer 3 multiplayer content. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.